Hi guys, in today's video we are going to install Kali Linux on Proxmox. We will go through the entire process of creating and configuring the virtual machine. Once we are able to log in, we will also configure the VM to access it remotely. So that we can connect to this VM remotely using any Windows machine or any other OS in the same network. This experience will be much better than Proxmox Web GUI. And also we will have full audio support, which is not available in Proxmox Web GUI. So let's get started. First, we need the ISO file to install Kali Linux on Proxmox. For that, we will go to Google and search for Kali Linux. I'll directly go to the download page of the official website by clicking on download or get Kali. Now let's choose the right version for my system. I will go for the installer images. Let's download the recommended one. I will save it here. We have to wait until the download is completed. The ISO file has been downloaded successfully. Now let's add this file to Proxmox. To do that, we will go to local storage. Then click on ISO images. I usually upload ISO file here, rather downloading it directly from Proxmox using URL. If you're willing to know that process as well, you can check out our Ubuntu installation video in this channel. I will provide the link in the description. To upload the file, simply click on the upload button on the top. Then select the ISO file. I will choose the Kali Linux here. Now click on upload. Easy, right? We are going to wait until the file is uploaded. Now the ISO file has been added to Proxmox. Let's proceed with creating a new VM for Kali Linux. Click on the Create VM button in the top right corner. This window will pop up. Here, we need to provide VM name and VM ID. By default, VM ID gets populated by Proxmox itself. And I'm okay with this ID. Next, the VM name, it will be Kali. Now for the operating system, I will choose the Kali Linux, the ISO we just uploaded. For system configuration, I will keep things as it is. Also enable QEMU agent. Next in disks, I will increase the disk size to 64 gigabytes. Here, I will give this VM two cores of processors. And for RAM, I will set it to 8 gigabytes. I'm good with the default network settings, so let's proceed. We can double check our settings here. And if everything looks okay, click on finish. Once done, a new VM will appear in the list. Now we can start the VM. All right, let's proceed with the OS installation. First, we will select the language. For me, English will be perfect. Next, we need to choose our location. Now, in keyboard layout, I will go with American English, but you can select as per your preference. It will take some time to load the installation files. Once that's done, It'll ask for the host name. This name is okay for me. Let's proceed. I'll skip the domain name. You can leave this blank unless you need it. Next, we'll set up our username and password. For partition, I will use the entire disk. So I will choose the first option. If you want to do some advanced configuration, you can select accordingly. Since this is a VM, I don't have to worry about data, so I will continue with this. We'll choose the recommended partition configuration, as it is beginner friendly. I am good with this setup, so let's finish it up. 
Now it is asking for confirmation one more time. If you're good with it, click on yes, else you can go back and change it. We can proceed with the default selection. If you would like some other desktop environment, you can select it as per your choice. Now we will wait for the installation to complete. Now it's asking if we want to install the Grub Bootloader on the same drive. I will choose yes. Now it is asking to select the disk. Let's select it and proceed. Once it's done, we'll reboot the system. Our Kali Linux is ready. Let's proceed with some basic setups. Here, we need to put the username and password, which we specified during the installation. And with that, we are in. First thing first, I will update the system. For that, open terminal and type the exact command. It will ask for the password. We have to wait until it's done. Now that my system is fully up to date, let's take the next step to set it up for remote access. To do that, I'm going to install the QEMU agent in XRDP. Once that's done, we'll power off the system. Now I will quickly remove the CD or DVD drive and start it off again. Let's check if the QEMU guest agent is working or not. Now we can see it is showing the IP address. Let's log into the system. Before I remotely access the machine, I will edit a file. Open the terminal and type this command. We need to add sudo in the beginning to edit it. Just copy and paste these commands from the description box below. And save the file by pressing Ctrl plus X followed by Enter. Once done, start the XRDP service by running this exact command. I will also start the XRDP session manager. Now let's check the status. The XRDP service is actively running in this machine. Now let's try to remotely access it. First, we need to log out from this session. Then I will open RDP on my main machine. Here, we need to add the IP address of that VM and provide the username. I will also save the credentials so that every time I don't need to provide it, this warning window will pop up. We need to select yes here. Also, I don't want to confirm this every time, so I will check the Don't Ask option. Now provide the password. And with that, we are in. We have successfully installed Kali in Proxmox Virtual Machine and set up it to use remotely. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please subscribe our channel to get update on the next upcoming videos.